Welcome, uh, my name is Kamela Mitolari. I am a PhD student in the European Project Interfaces. And today, together with Dr. Andreas Staden, we are going to have a brief uh, discussion over the company he is working on and also their goals and aim to achieve sustainability approaches. Uh, welcome, Andreas. Thank you for your time to answer these questions. Uh, so before we start uh, with uh, our interview or discussion, maybe you can briefly introduce to the audience uh, yourself, but also the company you are working for. Of course. So uh, my name is Andreas Taden. I'm uh, a chemist by education. I'm working with Henkel for uh, already 17 years now. And um, yeah, I'm active in the area of adhesives. So Henkel is actually a very big company. Uh, we are at the German stock market. We are a global company with more than 50,000 employees. And uh, we have two business uh, divisions. One is called Henkel Consumer Brands. Uh, there you can find uh, many products in the area of beauty care and laundry and detergents. And uh, the other part of the company is adhesive technologies. And this is actually the area where I'm active in. And um, yeah, Henkel is um, from the adhesive side of you, a worldwide technology leader, the biggest adhesive company in the world. Yeah, and I'm happy to, to, to work for this fantastic company. What does Henkel do for the development of a sustainable uh, or circular economy? I need to think about where to start. Uh, my personal impression actually is that uh, Henkel uh, always already was, was committed to sustainability. But for the last uh, six, seven years, um, almost every new development uh, we are engaging um, somehow is uh, uh, centered around uh, improved sustainability. And um, our company um, overall, we have uh, clear uh, sustainab uh, sustainability targets. Um, and yeah, in the uh, mid to long run, we are committed to uh, become uh, yeah, carbon uh, neutral or carbon positive, as we also call it, um, in operations until 2030. And from uh, our product side, everything overall uh, until 2040. So um, our sustainability targets uh, in terms of carbon dioxide uh, footprint are even more ambitious than what the European Union or uh, the German uh, government is, uh, is planning. And um, we have a lot of different activities. Yeah? Um, it's, it's way more than just uh, uh, production and uh, raw materials. Uh, of course, um, uh, we have plenty of different um, research activities, product development activities. Uh, it's about uh, becoming more energy efficient to uh, switch over to uh, bio-based raw materials. Um, so it's a quite holistic approach. Um, and um, yeah, uh, as I said in the beginning, my personal impression is that for uh, at least five to seven years, um, Almost everything what we are doing is really focused on sustainability. Thank you. Uh, why is sustainability that interesting and important for such a worldwide leading company? I think um, it's the mega trends of our society and uh, uh, yeah, the problems of our planet. So uh, we cannot simply continue to do what we have done so far. We have a growing pop uh, population, uh, growing. Um, yeah, demand from uh, an aging society, um, um, higher um, uh, quality of life. And um, of course, um, if we continue to uh, consume our resources as we have done it uh, for so many years now uh, on an annual increasing level, so this is uh, going to be, um, um, yeah, a a, a catastrophic event for the whole planet. Yeah? So we are approaching certain tipping points. Um, yeah, the 
water, sea level is rising, um, the forests um, are, are burning away, um, the atmosphere is filled more and more with carbon dioxide, uh, global warming. Um, if we are not changing uh, our behavior and also our industry um, with uh, everything we can, we will for sure miss uh, this famous 1.5 uh, degree climate goal. And uh, I'm uh, I really don't want to see this happen. So, so we are uh, doing everything in order to yeah, do uh, the best for our planet and all inhabitants, of course. Yeah, so um, our main motivation is, is um, yeah, the big one. Uh, it, you can also call it a mega trend, but it's, it's, it's really that uh, we are convinced um, that we not only have to fulfill certain legislative uh, requirements. So it's also, um, yeah, from the employees and also from our management, uh, we are personally convinced that we really need to change things because otherwise uh, we will have a lot of catastrophic events in future and uh, we don't want uh, this to happen. Okay, so uh, we know that uh and this interview is also part of the European project interfaces. We know that Henkel is participating. Uh, so if you can give us a comment uh, why uh, you specifically, but also Henkel in general, are part of this project. And also what is your role in this project? I um, have to say that I am personally uh, responsible for various open uh, research activities within Henkel uh, technologies, uh, especially the adhesive side of, of Henkel. So, um, uh, open innovation by definition is uh, collaborating uh, with people outside the company uh, and uh, especially working together with academia can be very fruitful. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we cannot continue to do things as we uh, have done it over many, many years. So, so we need to um, go for new solutions, new processes, uh, and so on. And to um, uh, go into the direction of um, uh, yeah, biotechnology, um, very mild conversions with enzymes, uh, maybe some clever processes uh, to improve efficiency. Um, so this is um, what we are aiming to do. And uh, traditionally, we are not really a biotech company. So um, it absolutely makes sense for certain um, products we have or certain raw materials we have that we um, also approach people from academia who are maybe uh, more experts than we are in the area of, of biotechnology. Uh, it, it can be the, uh, yeah, development of new enzymes, new processes. So um, we, um, yeah, we are perfectly aware that we have to change things, that we also have to take completely new approaches. We are also aware that it requires um, uh, yeah, stringent uh, research um, um, efforts. And uh, we, uh, we do this in an yeah, open, um, innovation, culture, environment, because we are also um, aware that we cannot do everything by ourselves. And um, yeah, to, to um, engage with experts from outside Henkel uh, to uh, hopefully in the very end achieve uh, the final overarching goal of yeah, improved uh, processes, um, the turnover, uh, going away from fossil resources to bio-based resources to switch to renewable carbon. Um, so, so this is something um, which really needs uh, multiple um, research efforts, multiple um, um, projects. And uh, very often it makes sense not to do everything by yourself, but to do it together with uh, other experts in certain um, scientific areas. Uh, you mentioned in your introduction that uh, you are part of the adhesive technology, uh, which is uh, Henkel at this part is worldwide uh, leading company. So what does uh, make Henkel to be a leading uh, company in this field, in this area? Maybe it's important to understand that Henkel is um, the biggest adhesive company 
uh, globally, but the adhesive market is very fragmented. So in the uh, adhesive um, uh, industry market, you will find thousands of small to mid-side companies and only a few big ones. And uh, what makes Henkel a little bit special is that uh, we are basically the only adhesive company uh, which almost uh, serves every market. Uh, so we have um, applications ranging from packaging, um, rather low-cost um, um, applications with cardboards, for example, but we also uh, serve the automotive market, um, the aerospace market, uh, the electronics market, uh, and of course the um, uh, applications do differ quite a lot and also it requires um, uh, a deep technology know-how. And Henkel, um, yeah, Henkel Adhesive Technologies, uh, we have thousands of customers too and 10,000 of uh, product formulations. So you can see that uh, the adhesive business is a quite unusual business uh, because it's relatively fragmented and requires a specialized solutions. I believe Henkel Adhesive Technologies, uh, we are yeah, active on a global scale, so we can also serve uh, big customers like big automotive companies everywhere they're, where they are active. This is one of our assets. And um, our customers also can trust us. So over the years, we uh, have, uh, I believe, created uh, a very good customer relationship uh, with a lot of trust. And um, maybe these are my final words to your question. Um, the adhesive business is a technology business, of course, but also um, uh, trust is very important because in the very end, most of our customers, they have um, yeah, a larger object, a larger product, and the adhesives are just a small part of it. Yeah? Think about packaging. Um, it's uh, 89, 99% foils and maybe 1% adhesive. But if the 1% adhesive is, is failing, the whole packaging is, is, is going to, to, to fail. Or if you think about uh, a car, a car is, um, uh, it has very tough requirements. So uh, the customers um, want a car, which also in 30 years uh, can operate on a daily basis and drive uh, through all kinds of weather conditions. It can be freezing, it can be unbelievable hot. And uh, if the adhesives do fail, the whole car can break down. And this is something you don't want to, to happen. Uh, or you are buying a smartphone for up to $1,000 or even more. Uh, just imagine the small part of the adhesives that they are failing, then the whole smartphone will fail. So, so um, uh, adhesives are hidden champions because they are most often not that prominent um, but uh, yeah it is nevertheless um, very often the basis that something works uh, works efficiently and um, uh, and if you have uh, a supplier of adhesives which has not the capabilities of Henkel in order to supply globally to ensure certain uh, quality or customer service. Um, this is, of course, a bad thing for, 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 for our customers or for any kind of industry. And um, uh, this, is, um, yeah, this is one of our strong assets. Yeah? We do know adhesives. We do know various different markets. Um, and, um, of course, we also do know our customers and their um, their requirements. Uh, we know that Henkel is publishing yearly uh, sustainability reports uh, that they cover the key ecological and social uh, developments. Uh, what progress has been made so far? And also, how do you see the future in this context? Henkel, of course, is going to continue with that. And I think the level of detail in our sustainability reports is extraordinarily good. And uh, we are a role model for various other companies uh, for example, in the uh, German stock market. Um, Henkel um, also is not only publishing the sustainability report, they are publishing it usually at the same day as the overall um, 
Company Report, also uh, together with our uh, economical um, figures. Uh, this uh, signifies the importance of sustainability uh, alongside our, um, our progress and success uh, as an industrial company. So um, we are not separating between sustainability and, and company success. It's really something which belongs together. And uh, we are very, very transparent uh, with our goals and how we are measuring them. We also have external companies uh, looking over these kind of figures if we are on track with our sustainability goals. So I believe that um, this reporting and transparency is uh, a, a very important thing to have. Thank you very much, Andreas, for the very interesting um, discussion. And uh, thank you all for watching this uh, interview. Thank you.